Hey everybody, this is Pastor Tyler Baker of Valiant Baptist Church, and we are located in the Jacksonville, Florida area. I'm coming to you with another segment on the subject of alcohol in the Bible, wherein I am proving from Scripture that we as Christians are to abstain from alcoholic consumption. Yes, it is a sin for a Christian to become drunken, but furthermore, it is a sin for a Christian to even drink alcohol. A lot of Christians' confusion stems from their misunderstanding of the word wine in the Bible. And throughout this series and these episodes, I've been proving that the word wine, when occurring in the King James Bible, can have either one of two meanings. It can either be referring to fermented juice or unfermented juice, and that is an alcoholic beverage or a non-alcoholic beverage. Our word wine today, the usage that is, exclusively refers to an alcoholic beverage. But in the English vernacular at the time of the King James Bible translation, the word wine was a much more general word that just meant juice, and it could be referring to an alcoholic juice or a non-alcoholic juice. I'm going to show you in this installment a great verse teaching just that. Look with me at Proverbs chapter number 23, verse number 31. The Bible says this, Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. Now we can learn a couple of different things from this verse. Number one, we can learn that there are two different types of wine. There is a wine that we should not even look at, while there is a wine that we can look at. It says this, look not thou upon the wine when it is red. So notice that when it is red, we should not look at the wine. But there is also a time before that when we can look at the wine. I want you to notice, and it's very important, that the change happens within the wine. It says, when it is red. So there, there is a state or a condition change within the wine or within the juice. And there is a time when it becomes red that we are no longer supposed to be looking at this wine. And what is one of the distinguishing characteristics? It says that it is red. It goes on to describe that type of wine that we should stay away from, and it says this, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. Now what he clearly just described was the process of alcohol fermentation, or technically referred to as ethanol fermentation. And you may or may not be familiar with the scientific process of fermentation, but basically what it is is this. Within any sugary beverage, of course there is sugar. Sugar is sucrose and it's made up of two molecules, glucose and fructose. When those molecules come into contact with oxygen, over time they begin to break down and convert into ethyl, ethanol, or what we know as alcohol. Now, throughout history, of course, people have had different means or methods by which that they would bring about the process of fermentation to produce alcohol. The most popular way in the ancient way, and during the Bible, of course, they used a wine press, wherein they would take grapes they would take the clusters, pluck the grapes off, and they would begin to step or stomp on the grapes, which would extract the juice from the grape itself. Now, they wouldn't take the grape and the skin of the grape and throw it away. They would keep that. The reason being is because it contained uh, yeast. And what yeast does is it, it uh, uh, further progresses or expedites the process of fermentation. But a lot of people don't know this, that also the skin of the grape is actually where wine gets its color. If you've ever taken a grape and squeezed it, a fresh grape, squeezed it directly into a cup, you would have noticed that it is not red at all. It is more of a light white color or sometimes a little bit of a light pink color, but it is far from red. The way that uh, wine gets its redness or its red color is actually from the process of fermentation sitting in the yeast of the skin of the grapes and that's the same today. So that explains why the Bible says not to look at the wine when it is red. That is when it went through or goes through the process of fermentation after that we are not to look at it but prior to that of course it's just juice it's the pure blood of the grape. We're given a couple of other of distinguishing fe features, and it says this, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. Now, giving its color in the cup, of course, is when it becomes red. When it changes, it starts to become more of a, vi a vivid or, or a vibrant color. 
What does it mean when it says it moveth itself aright? Now, the process of fermentation is a natural reaction that takes place within the liquid. It is actually moving and changing. The, the molecules are converting. This is why they have to put a vent on wineskins, or this is why that they will pump out and have a hose that runs out of the modern day contraptions that they will use to ferment alcohol. That is because at the same moment when the molecules are breaking down and converting into alcohol, they are converting into carbon dioxide. They are also giving off gassing. They call this degassing. And it actually causes the uh, wine or the juice to move itself around or to move itself aright, just like the Bible tells us. So clearly what is being described in Proverbs chapter number 23, verse number 31, is the process of fermentation. And what we are commanded as Christians is to not look at that. We as Christians are not supposed to drink or even look at alcohol. Now, what does it mean to look? Is it a sin to even look upon wine or to look upon alcohol? Of course not. It's not saying that if you're walking in the grocery store, if you're walking in Kroger, and you happen to accidentally glance down you know, the spirit's aisle that you've sinned against the Lord. That is not at all what it's saying. He's just saying to stay away from it. It's kind of like when Eve told the serpent that she's not supposed to eat of the tree, and she says, neither shall we touch it lest we die. Of course, the commandment was not to eat of it, not to partake of it. We as Christians are commanded not to partake of alcohol or to drink it, so we should just stay away from it. We should not even look at it. Here in Proverbs chapter number 23, it goes on to give us the description and the bad negative side effects of drinking this type of wine. What will happen? It says this in verse number 32, at the last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Now, this should sound familiar to you from the last episode, and that was Deuteronomy chapter number 32, verse number 33, and that's where Moses was describing the enemy's wine, saying that it's different than his. His was the pure blood of the grape, but then he said this about the enemy's wine. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asp. There, the asp is, of course, referring to a snake. It's referring to a serpent and its venom or its poison. And that is what this is referring to in Proverbs chapter number 23. It says that at the last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. This verse further proves also that you are not even supposed to be drinking this type of wine. Notice that it says at the last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. So what is the warning? Don't look at it because if you drink this type of wine, What's going to happen later is that it will bite like a serpent and sting like an adder. So what's the point? Don't even drink it to begin with. Don't even social drink. Don't even take sips of it. Just completely stay away from it. Why? Because at the last, at the last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. It goes on to say this, thine eyes shall behold strange women and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. So, of course, there were given all the different negative side effects, all of the different outcomes negatively, of course, from that type of wine. But most importantly, I want you to understand that there are two different types of wine. This wine is a wine that we are not to look at. The type of wine or juice that goes through the fermentation process that becomes red because it sat with the skin of the grapes and it yeet with the yeast and was fermented and turns into alcohol, we as Christians are not even to look at. We're to stay away from it. But then there's also another type of wine. And what is it? It's the pure blood of the grape. It's a wine that is not poisonous. It is a wine that is not alcoholic. That is the type of wine that we as Christians should be drinking. God bless you and have a good day.